November 15th, 2001. The very first original Xbox launches in North America, cementing Microsoft's humble beginnings into the home console market. In order to offer a diverse launch lineup, Microsoft needed to offer a racing game which would accompany their debut console, especially since the lineup of their rival Sony was killing it at the time. With a head start of roughly one year, the PlayStation 2 was the home of many future classics in 2001, such as the first Midnight Club, Ridge Racer 5, the first Burnout, and of course the third entry to gaming's racing conglomerate, Gran Turismo 3. The competition was tough, and Microsoft's initial response as part of their launch lineup was a game called Project Gotham Racing, which launched to good critical and commercial success, especially considering it was a new franchise for a brand new system, so there was no prior audience to build off of. However, it didn't help to sway fellow racing game fans towards the Xbox, as the Project Gotham Racing series went for a completely different style more arcade handling model, city-based fantasy tracks, and a general more pick-up-and-play nature. In the early 2000s, the hype for racing simulations really started to kick off. With the new technical advancements, people were hyped to see believable physics, real-world tracks, and detailed car models. And in 2001, the best and most accessible way to get that experience still was Gran Turismo 3, which launched the year prior. Wanting to compete with Polyphony's staple franchise, Microsoft took it upon itself to build a brand new studio in the very same year with the goal of rivaling Polyphony Digital. The result? Turn 10 Studios, partially made up by people who have previously collaborated on the aforementioned Project Gotham Racing series. However, it would take four very long, grueling years to see their efforts come to fruition. So long, in fact, that Polyphony had already released their next entry to the Gran Turismo franchise, which went on to become a monumental success and a huge step forwards for the genre as a whole. So just two months after the release of Gran Turismo 4, Turn 10 Studios would release their first ever racing game to the public. Titled Forza Motorsport, it hit store shelves on May 3rd, 2005 in North America and 10 days later in Europe. But was it a success? Could a debut game from a new studio compete with a giant like Gran Turismo? Were those four years of development time really worth it? That's exactly what I wanted to see for myself. So I got myself a copy of the first Forza Motorsport and started playing on my Xbox 360. What you're going to see are my first unfiltered reactions to the game with hardly any prior knowledge. Is Forza Motorsport a good alternative to Gran Turismo? And does it still hold up in 2022? Let's get to the bottom of this and find out. Alright, here it is. Forza Motorsport 1. I already uh, made a profile and I already have some percentage in, in arcade mode. Apparently the arcade mode is like a separate career mode. You basically just get a bunch of gold medals. I think I'm gonna focus on the career mode. I think that's where the meat is at. You know what I mean? So this is an original Xbox game. And by the way, I've never actually played a game from the original Xbox. But I got it right here. I had to actually import this one from the UK. So where should we start? I kind of want to start in NA because kind of feels more in line with the game, but I'm like from Europe, so I feel like I should pick Europe. What do we get a starter cars? Dude, a fucking Zarb. Let's start in a fucking Zarb, my guy. How often do you get the chance to start in a goddamn Zarb? Zarb gang, Zarb gang. Oh, I can customize the paint, I guess. Can we get like a fake carbon hood, please? Yeah, boy. <laughs> That's the important stuff. This feels very much like Gran Turismo. Uh, speci specifically Gran Turismo 3. The way the cups are kind of like divided. And I gotta say, looks wise, it looks pretty decent. You know, you gotta remember this is an OG Xbox game, you know. This was released in 2005. Pretty nice damage model. We will never see the damage model whoo, of this game because I am an absolutely perfect driver that never makes mistakes. Damage penalty? Oh god. Never one reward. You've established a relationship with Pirelli. Your Y-rated tires for all cars are 10% off. Well, good thing I didn't buy them yet. I would have been really pissed if I bought them already. Tip, use the brakes early and often. <laughs> ha! Ha! Nah. I don't need brakes. I don't think we'll win this, by the way. <laughs> I saw some Subarus and, and other cars in the beginning. Uh, yeah, that... That guy's smoking us. I guess we need to upgrade this one a little bit. My first thought is always weight reduction. You can put a turbo in. Actually, let's, let's, let's not do anything. Let's see if the car's already fast enough. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I think that may have already been enough. Yeah, that car's very, very tail happy. There we go. 
<laughs> I did drive that laser once. But there's tire wear, so you gotta be a bit careful. Oh, look at this rammer, dude. You serious? Oh, it's a really cool track here. Those are the kind of tracks that you don't really see anymore in, in modern for some motorsport games. And I feel like that's kind of something that's very missing. Like they put in so many real life racetracks that are just boring as hell. But I feel like they got less and less creative with these city tracks. Or I guess general fictional tracks. It would be interesting to have a racing game that is like an exact mix of open world and closed city tracks. They basically have a bunch of racetracks next to each other and you can just drive between them. Yeah, we're gonna cure up. Wait. Is that one American? Because it's an Akira? And an NSX? How the hell? Integra and the NSX. NSX is way faster. I think that one we can just use right away. New York. Wait. Isn't that track exactly the same as in Gran Turismo 4? Or am I, am I mistaken? Pretty spot on, actually. The New York track in Gran Turismo 4, similar to GT's own Seattle circuit or Tokyo Route 246, is based on a real-life street layout in the city. Forza Motorsport 1 and later games would also feature this nearly identical configuration. Also, it's New York 2. Not New York 1, it's New York 2. I guess 2 means reverse, if I had to guess. Because I think that's how it worked in Gran Turismo 3 as well. Okay, what about these point to point races? Impreza vs. Lancer, Eclipse vs. Integra. I say they got some pretty cool event setups here. You're telling me that this thing is actually just a tiny bit faster. Sure, I'm not gonna question it. I mean, it has a carbon hood. Obviously, it's faster. <laughs> What's this now? Pacific Shipyards. Okay, so I actually have some sprints in this, which is pretty nice. This actually feels like a street race right now. Look at this. <laughs> Yo, this track is really cool. We used to crash on this track. Not for me and my unparalleled driving skill. Oh, shit. And why don't they do these tracks anymore in modern Forza Motorsport? That's so cool. There's like a run through an actual city here. Yeah, it's just straight up felt like a street race, man. <laughs> what can I say? Very cool. Let's see. I don't need brakes. Stop! Oh no. Ah fuck. Holy shit. Look at the physics. <laughs> Dude, look at his bumper. Yo, look at the damage on that guy. Oh, I think my car is actually swerving in one direction or Oh yeah, it's definitely swerving to the left. Oh boy. Actual damage. There you have it. My poor Zab is broken. I think I can get back my second place. Uh, four seconds ahead, I don't think I can catch him. How, how could this car possibly lose? I mean, look at it. Damn it. Rate this game out of 10 for back in the day and by today's standards. Honestly, I think back in the day in 2005, it's like a 9. Today's standards, like a 7 maybe. There really isn't anything inherently wrong with the game, you know, it's just... You know, what you see is what you get, basically. You have, like, a pretty cool career mode with, like, event restrictions. You have upgrading, you have a livery editor, which I haven't used yet. Pretty cool damage system. I just don't like this modern approach of racing games that just have no progression whatsoever, you know? And it's just like, ah, oh, you can use anything anywhere. Fuck it. It just feels really lazy. Hey, we've actually made it to level 10. That means we unlocked a bunch of stuff. Ooh. That's a nice car. Probably it's faster than what we have currently, but uh, we have to use the uh, Integra for the championship. Just barely scratching the surface here. It really feels like a Gran Turismo. <laughs> oh, shit. That guy got wrecked. Let's just upgrade the car. Oh, look at this. Oh, how many? What? How many options are available here? Holy shit. <laughs> what the hell? What are they doing nowadays? How does this fucking 17-year-old game have this amount of options? And the modern ones just have like the stock spoilers and that's it. What a joke. What a sick joke. It's gonna be the chunkiest Integra you have ever seen. <laughs> Rear lens. Oh wow. Even stuff like that. We haven't actually done anything to the car in terms of performance. That is actual rice. Oh man, the car is so ugly. Oh, what have I done to this thing? <laughs> oh god. It's so unbelievably ugly, dude. Lord have mercy. Look how you massacred my boy. Oh, this thing has no brakes. I don't need brakes. All right, let's check out a new track, Rio de Janeiro. Gotta say, another, another really cool track here. And these tracks, they all dumped in newer Forza games. It's just kind of baffling, man. Oh, they made so many cool tracks back in the day, and now they just dumped them all. I will say, though, I'm, I'm definitely having more fun with this than with uh, Forza Motorsport 7. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe, uh, actually, I can, actually, I think I can tell you why. First of all, the career is a little bit more structured. Like, every championship has, like, a certain theme. Point number two is the tracks. The game doesn't have as many tracks. The thing in Motorsport 7 actually has a lot of tracks. But the tracks here are more interesting. You know? 
like this Rio track, for example. But number three is that you actually... Uh, the cars don't get auto-upgraded. It's something that I hated about Forza Motorsport 7. So every uh, championship always had like a minimum amount of performance or like an exact amount of performance you needed. And the game would auto-upgrade your car. They call it homologation. And that every car is the same speed. I absolutely hated that. Yeah, every car can be whatever speed they want. So you, you actually have an incentive to upgrade the car. I actually think this is better than, than Forza Motorsport 7, hands down. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, thanks again for the sh... Yeah. Ow. We do. Nice. I will say you very... Fairly rarely have to buy a car. Like, for I've been playing for like three hours. And for so... Like, except for the starter car, I actually didn't need to buy a car yet. And the game kind of gives you everything that you need. Yeah, and it's actually probably been a safer bet. Why upgrade this one? That would be an option too. Dude, I love when you quit a race. Everyone DNFs. <laughs> it's like... All right, I'm out. And then everyone's like, all right, I'm out too. Fuck it. Everyone DNFs when I say so. That was quick. Usually uh, two laps around here takes me more than four minutes. Like you won't find tracks this cool in, in Forza Motorsport 7, I guarantee you. As they usually say, you know, a lot of games nowadays, racing games, they are wide as the ocean, deep as a puddle. I think that really applies to, especially the modern Forza games, you know? Like there's so much to do and so much to see. But nothing really feels substantial, you know? Ooh, wow. Yeah, that thing will definitely kill me. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, dude? That's an original Forza bumper. Look where the exhausts are. The exhausts are in the fucking bumper. Dude, I'm getting that one. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I'm loving it, dude. Listen to the car reeing. I think this one actually looks pretty nice. I mean, the rear bumper is pretty insane. <laughs> I'm um, not too huge on the hood, to be honest. No, no, not bad. And the car do go, hmm. It do be going, hmm. Are you fucking for real? Dude, the AI is so ruthless in this. Oh, look at this, dude. Look at this pile up. Look at the cars. <laughs> look at the parts flying around there. Dude, this is just a fucking pile up now. The AI is so much more ruthless here. They actually actively spin you out. It's kind of it's kinda crazy. Six and a half seconds behind. If you can still catch it up. These brakes. Oh, dude. Six seconds of penalty for this. Yeah, fuck me. This is impossible now. Probably not enough. Nope. It still was first place, though. Interesting. Oh, you get a bonus money for car rarity. Yeah, you can actually increase your car rarity when you upgrade the car. I mean, the car also has, like, its own rarity stats. Great. Good thing I just used an RX-8. Ooh. Oh, that thing looks cool. With some tuned-up Celica. I'll take it. The price cards you get here are like exclusive ones. They don't really get anywhere else. But that's about all that we can do in the amateur championship. So let's check out the professional. Starting with a D-class tournament. First place receives the Toyota 2000 GT. Very nice. What the hell is this? Toyota Camry Solara. I've never seen this thing before. Oh, the races are getting pretty long now. I guess, uh, yeah, that's literally the same way it works in Gran Turismo 3 as well. Like the further you go in the leagues, the longer the races get too. Qualified in second here. Okay, I gotta say, these, car, these cars are a little bit too slow for me. I think we should rather do this A-Class event. Jump from D to A-Class. <laughs> Look at these cars. Uh, maybe maybe we start with B. Ooh! Wait, yeah, the, this car we won earlier. I mean, what are, what are the other opponents here? NSXR... An Opal Speedster. Okay. Sure, that, that goes well together. Why does this thing have a supercharger? Okay, I'm not gonna question it. Have you tuned this? is a blend. After this much praise, it was time for some critique, though. After all, no game is ever perfect. And this being the first game in the Forza franchise, the same rule definitely applies. Dude, it's fucking low, man. <laughs> Especially with the with the suspension upgrade we gave it. It's like Need for Speed Shift, but worse? Nah. Nah, not at all. I think this is still better than Need for Speed Shift. Cars aren't sliding all over the place. They actually have like proper handling and physics. They actually have an, an interesting career mode. I'd pick this any day over Shift. Ooh! Sick. Oh, we, can, we can surely use that one somewhere. Oh yeah, I got the... This was like one of the first Porsches ever made. I also have the Stratos. That thing is just gonna make me spin out. I don't even wanna use this thing. That's just suicidal. Yeah, this is a Supra that I built off stream. And that one actually had broken engine audio. Maybe I can show this off. So for anyone that was wondering if you can drift in this game... You can. But not if you're a shitty drifter like I am. What's that? Test track infield? That one's new. 
A complex string ripoff. Yeah, at least in Gran Turismo 3, they didn't have the audacity to use the complex string in the races. Yeah, they did. Now, I will say the AI can sometimes be bullshit. I noticed that yesterday too when I was playing off stream. You can tell sometimes they're a lot faster than they should be. And sometimes you have tournaments or like, you know, certain cups, races. But there's like one opponent that is like way in, in a different car that is way faster than the rest. And usually it's a car that you can't obtain, you know, it's like one, one of the price cars. Like, look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at the opponents and then you have this fucking random ass stingray way faster than the rest. This is what I'm talking about. This is this can sometimes be super bullshit. And the thing is, you can't even buy this stingray. So you kind of have to find a car that gets close. Yeah, I'm going to play something that lets me win. You guys want to see wins, right? <laughs> Don't tell me stock. That is actually impossible. That is fucking impossible. How are you supposed to do this? You cannot obtain the Stingray here. And look how much faster the Stingray is than the rest. You cannot complete this. Why is all of this stock, man? Stock, stock, stock my dick, man. Only way I can beat it is to get one myself. Point to point American muscle. Okay, surely that's, surely that's doable. Okay, now that we got this thing, we can actually do the, uh, the, the classic sports. There we go. But no way in hell I could have picked anything than the Corvette. I mean, look where the other opponents are on the map. Like, this one's just way faster than the rest. I think there are no pit stops in this, right? At least I would be surprised. Like, the pits are open, but I don't think you can use them. Although there is tire and f tire wear and fuel. You know, these pit stops when you have family. I don't think your family can save your tires from exploding. But, um, good luck with that nonetheless. I think we have one more race to go. One in Laguna Seca. Fucking kill me, man. <laughs> I hated this track so much as a kid because I just sucked at it so much. I think one fuck up and it's GG actually. Like one major fuck up and it's GG. No pressure, right? No pressure. <laughs> nice. Miata? Do they have to be stock too? Ah, god damn it. Stock my ass, man. One thing that I find odd is um, usually the camera is pretty loose. Or, you know, kind of like how you would want a camera to be. When you look back, <laughs> you get, I'm getting getting massive Gran Turismo vibes again. I think then I'm gonna check out the arcade mode. Because it, it has its very own progression system. Oh, we haven't seen the test track yet. Oh, fucking hell. Looking at that one gives me anxiety, man. And then we gotta do it in reverse, fucking Christ. You have the entire Nibbuck ring of this, too. What do we use here? We can obviously use our own cars. Oh, man. Do I want to drive the PT Cruiser? Beetle. It's another, another good contender. Okay, fine. PT Cruiser. Look at this chonka, man. Bone fucking stock too. Does not get better than this. Oh, it's like I'm moving a house with this thing. Ooh, what is this? Damn! GT class. That's a good looking 350Z. Hot damn. Volvo. I have not used a Volvo yet. Fuck it, I'm going Volvo, man. <laughs> nice, dude. Didn't know there was Volvo in this. Look at this thing, man. It's 350Z. Porsche. Granite ZX, get fucking ratioed, man. Outclassed by Volvo. Later on, I decided to try out some of the faster cars. And that's where things became increasingly more difficult. Hey, yo. Yo, look at this guy, man. How am I supposed to get close to these fucking Koenigseggs, dude? Yeah, and here's definitive proof that cutting is not worth it. Actually, it's not even a Koenigsegg there. A fucking Ferrari. Hey, yo. <laughs> dude, the AI is ruthless, man. Go a little bit off track and the car just slows to a crawl. Dude, I'm molding. Ah, now I'm molding, man. Where the fuck did that goddamn Koenigsegg come from? No, what the fuck, man? Oh, the AI is so goddamn unbalanced in this game. It's insane. If you want to play like that game, then I'm taking the meta car too. Of course, now everyone is using this car. Woo, okay. Well, the shift I could make it. Hello! Oh. I can't. I, uh, this is too much for me, man. Let's just jump to R. S-Class is garbage. Are you for real? Hello? Hello? What is going on? Like, what, what, what should I pick here, man? Every card that I take is garbage. What was winning earlier? I don't know. What's the fastest one here? Like the LM cars. At least I drive the M3. Much prefer the career mode over the arcade mode, that's for that's for sure. Alright, now we're starting first. That means we should probably do really well here. Now watch this be way easier. Look at this. What is this, dude? Rice the mighty man. Like look at the difference all of a sudden. 
That's just picking a different fucking car in the same class at this point. Like, it's not even in the same class. <gasps> Dude, I'm goddamn done, man. Oh my god. You cannot be for real. Dude, I'm fuming, man. I mean, look at the map again. It's just us three so far away from the rest. That balancing in this game is honestly so bad. It's crazy, dude. That did not age well. A lot of things did in this game, but this did not. By God. Man, that was a pain in the ass. Now, nah, I want to see this track. Okay, I'm going to do one more, one more lap around this and one lap around the Nordschleife, and then I'm done. It looks like someone had a stroke trying to draw a complex string. Okay, so it looks better than the complex string already. Are they simulating like what city track turns or whatever the fuck that's supposed to be? Oh my god. Okay, what the fuck is that coming up here? Oh, what the hell? Who designs this shit? <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is easily worse than the complex string. I actually wanted to race on this in in the career. It's like, are you are you high? Ah, uh, that was awful. Okay, let me, let me get into the Nürburgring. See what that looks like. Let's check it out. That's pretty cool, actually. The entire Nordschleife on an original Xbox racing game. That's magic, man. You even have all the detail on the road itself. Like, all the drawings and shit. Although I think the vegetation is not super accurate. There's usually a lot more trees. I mean, it looks like it's like an autumn, right? Usually racing games, they depict this track in summer. I would have preferred if they made like three more tracks instead of the Nürburgring. Because the game really does suffer from a very, very low amount of tracks and it does get repetitive very quickly. Especially considering you don't really get to race on the Nürburgring in the, in the career unless you dumped several hours into the game already. But at the same time I can understand they obviously wanted to have like a technical, you know, something technically impressive. But there is way less vegetation. As I said, I'm not sure if it's because it's, you know, fall, like just a different season that I'm used to. Or maybe this place in the Fallout universe. Huh? Ever thought of that? Maybe this is in like 2136, you know? Post-apocalyptic Germany, you know? After like some bombings. You know, maybe this is Fallout. Fallout. Fallout Motorsport, there you go! <laughs> You never know, man. I look at the carousel, it actually works. I do get some extra grip there. Okay, I think I'm creeping up to the straight now. Let's see what the car can do with its quote-unquote 9.3 speed stat. It can't even get remotely close to 400. Actually, it can get pretty fast. Although it's already struggling. I think I saw 300. Wait, it has a 7th gear? Are you fucking for real? <laughs> what is this gearing on this thing? It has a 7th gear at 380. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for those extra 10 kilometers that I'm going to scratch out of the car. <laughs> 10 kilometers power. Alright, I think that's it for Forza Motorsport 1 though, guys. To summarize, it's insane how similar this is to Gran Turismo 3. It carries the same strengths and the same faults. Same weaknesses, like to a T. Great career, great handling, great physics, great graphics for the time. But then on the other hand, really not good AI. <laughs> Really not good balancing, low amount of tracks, and I guess also low amount of cars, but it's kind of more severe in Gran Turismo 3. Just because this game actually has like some decent customization. Hard to say which one I prefer, probably Gran Turismo 3, but it's purely nostalgia. And there you have it. Overall, I am surprised I enjoyed the first entry of the Forza Motorsport series as much as I did. I fully expected something more along the lines of a tech demo, but what I got was a surprisingly fun racing simcade. I've also bought the second Forza Motorsport game, and I'm quite excited to see where Turn 10 managed to evolve the series from here. Yeah, it looks very promising. Maybe, maybe they'll be able to turn this game into like a big franchise, you know? Who knows? Thank you all for watching me go on this trip down history lane. As always, a special shoutout goes out to my patrons for supporting me directly, and my editor James for helping me get this video out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and let me know if you'd like to see the next Forza game. I hope to see you all again next time. Take care.